you guys, it's me again. Hoping that you're continuing to live healthy and be well under extraordinary circumstances. We are continuing our short videos uh, so that we can shoot a couple in a short period of time and hopefully satisfy your boredom. Um, we're happy to do it. And uh, today's episode is going to be on Emilio Pucci. Uh, Pucci is someone that I've always related to because of his graphics and also because of his use of color. He is probably hands down one of the most interesting personalities uh, ever to have been in the fashion industry because he was involved, well first of all he comes from an aristocratic family going back to the 13th century in Italy, but above and beyond that he was not necessarily sitting back on his laurels. He uh, was involved during the war. He was captured. Uh, I mean, his story is really remarkable and could probably do uh, a film based on his life that would be far more interesting than 007. We'll see. In any case, um, after the war ended, um, he it said that as he was flying low to avoid radar, he observed the water patterns, and that's actually what inspired him to do uh, one of his first prints. So after the war, he went to Switzerland where he taught at a boys' boarding school, and he actually made his girlfriend and himself ski outfits, and he was discovered there on the slopes. Um, and he proceeded to do his first collection in 1948 called Capri. Uh, and it was from there that his fashion career started. In 51, Pucci showed his collection at the Italian Fashion Fair, and um, the industry helped revitalize Italy's post-war economy. That seems to be fashion re revitalized France, and, you know, it's, it's just everybody wants it and loves it. Once his business mushroomed, his, the Italian textile industry was surviving on Pucci production alone. And you can see where his, um, the happiness of his prints would be what inspired a lot of people. In 54, he introduced um, silk jersey to the dress line. And I love matte jersey because it has a weight to it and there's um, a sexiness to it that you can't really replicate in any other fabric. That became a huge success and then he started to use other fabrics and apply his prints to other things. Pucci uh, sold his clothing in boutiques like Saks Fifth Avenue and Lord and & Taylor and Neiman Marcus. He never reduced his his prices because he had a philosophy that um, he didn't pay for advertising so he didn't have to jack up his prices to be able to compensate for the cost of that and uh, many people think that his business dipped in the 70s for that reason but uh, I think because of his frugality which is so interesting because he came from such aristocratic background um, Frugality was a stronger factor to him than his ego, and I really respect him for that. I don't know if I would have been able to make that decision. Um, he also al allied himself with a lingerie company, Form Fit Rogers, and you'll see a lot of uh, bras and half slips and panties in the 60s and 70s that are um, an alliance. You'll see EPF. R, which stands for Amelia Pucci Form Fit Rogers. Uh, many of his prints actually have his signature on it, but not in the lingerie necessarily because it was a collaboration. Anyway, enough about me talking. Uh, these mannequins have I, this particular one I love because the black really balances out the busyness of this print. Um, it's a matte jersey. It's early 70s, and it's in beautiful condition. Many of these pieces are available for purchase on our website. This gorgeous piece is a silk jersey, and it is a small size. It's probably about a size 2-4, and I would say this is 1960s. 
It has his signature in the flower. He would really make an effort to, to match the pattern with the seams. And that's the sign of a really good designer because that's not easy to do. Okay, so this is a cotton shift from the 60s. And then we have this matte jersey from, I would say, the late 70s. It has almost a Jean Muir, Ozzy Clark kind of silhouette. It's tame compared to some of the others. Of all the pieces I have here, this is my favorite. This is a, a twill, and it's a coat dress, and the back pattern is divine. It's definitely 1970s. One of the fabrics that he, he used a lot of is cotton velveteen. So this is one cotton velveteen dress. Always looking at comfort. This is a blouse, which you can wear with cigarette pants or a skirt. And another vel cotton velveteen jacket. This one is more spaced, less dense in its pattern. And then silk twill, like a scarf silk. This beautiful silk blouse that's more like a tunic because of the length. And this one as well, but this is more of a silk chiffon. My colors, I may snag this one. And then we have a couple examples of the Form Fit Rogers on nylon. And you can see the EPFR signature on the print on both of these. The bra is built in. Very Goldie Hawn. And um, I was lucky enough to be gifted this gorgeous Pucci tell by Peter Dundas himself when he was designing at Pucci. It was a Christmas present. And then last but not least, oh, actually we have two other examples. We have a late 60s, early 70s kind of newsboy cap. And we have two men's silk ties. So you see he ran the gamut as far as different types of things. I would say maybe 15 years ago, right about the time I opened up the, the LA store, I was traveling to Paris a lot to buy for the store. And when Pucci pieces would come up at auction, they brought really high prices. Uh, the market has changed quite a bit. Um, the market is not really supporting high, high prices, but I would say that these are pieces that will always be desirable and always be in demand. And uh, if you watch the market, you might be able to snag a few pieces at really good prices. Pucci found inspiration uh, in many things. Like I mentioned, the water that he flew over, the patterns in the water. But he also, places that he traveled to, like Japan and Bali, uh, a lot of his patterns were uh, derived from those experiences. And, you know, think about designers uh, in the 60s and 70s that used Pucci-esque kind of prints. Uh, I mean, even Peter Max, to some degree, a lot of his graphics and designs were very Pucci-like. But I can list probably four or five other designers that used prints that were in the, in the manner of. So, but yeah, that's it. Um, I have to tell you that after starting this and researching Pucci's early life, um, I'm very interested in reading more because he seems like um, quite an amazing personality. So that's it for this short uh, episode. Uh, I encourage you, if you haven't already, to subscribe. Um, we are coming up with other shorts to, to shoot during this strange period in history and um, also we will be doing longer versions as well so um, we love your support we love your positive feedback and um, thank you very much for watching